this episode, I want to take a look at materials a bit more in depth before we continue with the layer workflow. So I'm going to drag this material here that we used in previous episodes on top of my layer stack here. As you can see here, I have a very limited set of inputs here that we can play with. So how do we go about to change anything if you want to? For example, maybe I want to be able to adjust the specularity. I can't do this in this material. So let's take a look at how we can do that in the no graph next. Okay, so I'm in the no graph now and let's take a look here what we have. So this mess here, that's my channel nodes where I created a mask earlier. So we don't need to really pay attention to this yet. I'm just going to go in here and select my shader node. So this is a shader and this is channels, essentially color and the specular roughness and all of that. So if I select the shader node here and hit the L button, I'm going to auto layout. You can see here, this is the material. So if you don't know no graph, it goes from left to right. If you look here at the lay stack here, I'm just going to do a quick recap how this works. You can see the base is here and this is uh, essentially the base, these here. This is the, the bottom of the stack. This rust here, I added this rust material on top. We have this turquoise. So this is that uh, set of nodes and so on. And we have the red and it goes up until we come to the top over here. And this is where I added this new material. So I'm going to jump into this one so we can take a look at how the material actually looks like. So if I now go here and double click on this one, we can see here we have the tile bolt here, for example. This is how many repeats the texture is going to be applied and we can rotate it and we have hsv so let's take a look here now if i control double click on this one we get in and this is what a material might look like this is a very basic material so we want to do some editing so for example here all of these tallable nodes and you can see there's wrench icon here this one actually tells the interface that it's been exposed to the ui and that is what then have been linked here, for example, the repeat when I on the top of the material, when I change the tile repeat, you can see inside the material, this one starts to also repeat. So this is how you can control the material. But for example, here, let's say, take a look here at the roughness. This one doesn't have any override. So maybe I want to be able to level this one. So if I hit the one button and take a look at this map individually, maybe I want to to add a, uh, a way to do levels, for example, if I want to contrast this. So we can expose this to a material. So let's take a contrast. Let's insert the contrast node and see what we can do with the contrast. If I double click on it, we can see here, I want to be able to contrast it. So this might be useful if you want to do something for example, change the value spec or contrast like so. And now to be able to use this outside of this material group, like in the interface in Mori, if you hit this wrench icon, it will be exposed to the top level. So let's take a look here. If I double click one here, now you can see here, this is the interface. These two here was there before when I drag this in. And this one, the spec or contrast is the one that I now previously exposed. So let's see here what happens if I start to contrast this. We can see here you might start to see something here in the in in the grazing angle and if I start to essentially contrast pivot now we can start to dial in the spec for example if we want to do that. Let's now also add the levels operation for the specular roughness. So I'm going back to my material here in the tab here and I'm going to hit tab levels and it's good to name these nodes because they're going to be part of the, the name there when you start to expose this. Okay, so let's expose the wrenches here that we want to be able to control outside in the material. I'm going to expose white and black and uh, why not the mode and, and these here. And we can see here in this material group here, all of these just uh, appeared here. And now we can essentially if I go back, take a look here in the interface, we can start to control the, the levels of this map and the contrast. Let's reset all of this. So it may probably make sense to have the contrast after the levels. So we can change the order here. I'm just going to go in here and, and say levels first, 
and then contrast. So the order operation will be, uh, this is the original map, then we can apply some level operation, and then after that, it applies the contrast operation if we start to change the contrast. And you can see here now in the interface, we essentially have the specular roughness before uh, the levels, if that was would make sense in the UI, and we can actually change that as well. So let's go back here and hit the P button here. And this one exposes up this group knobs here. And this is where we can start to change order or even link some parameters together. I just want to change uh, this one, the specular of the level, so it's one step above in the UI here. So I hit the up button. And now you can see it actually change the order here. So now we have the levels first and then specular roughness contrast. And let's take a look at something else here that will be interesting to take a look at. So I'm not a big fan of not having any ways to adjust the bump. I would in a material expose some bump overrides. In my case here on this material, I would like to have the bump at 0.5, have this map as an overlay on top of the 0.5. We can do that by going into color, for example, expose a, a set this to a scalar and go in here and say gray value and say 0.5 like so. And now we can merge in this one on top of the 0.5. So let's do that. Hit tab and type merge. I want to have this in the base, this one over, and this one to the input of the bump, like so. I want to expose here the mode and the amount slider. But first I'm going to go in here and say bump adjust. Let's set this to, I'm going to look through the node here. Let's set this to overlay, contrast overlay, and, and see here what happens. And then dial down the value here. Let's say that this is the, the starting point that we're going to have. I'm going to expose the, the mode and the amount here. And go back here, take a look at this from outside. And then we have bump adjust, like so. So now we could essentially start to play with the, the bump adjust. And in a real material, if I would build this uh, for, for example, my own uh, render man materials, I have also have like contrast operations and level possibilities, but then you would essentially insert that on this branch here. Okay, so in the next episode, we're gonna take a look at how we can create a Rust material from scratch. So you can also be able to download it in the support files later on.